Since I started putting these videos on YouTube, I've met a few guys, primarily through our wood turning guild, who have stopped into the shop and commented that it always looks like it's so big when they're watching the video, but it's actually a fairly small shop, and it is. One of the things I do to try to get past the fact that it's so small is have almost everything in here on mobile bases or casters, wheels of some kind. Also, I don't have enough space, so I don't have a real good workbench. I'd like to have one of those butcher block tops with the tail vise and everything like that. I just don't have space to commit to that. So what I have here is my poor man's workbench. It's actually my router table. And on top of my router table, I just have this piece of melamine. And I use these five star bolts to run through a hole on the edge of my router table. And then it goes into a couple of quarter 20 inserts that I've put on the bottom here. So once it's tightened down, it works real well. Now the reason for this video is to show you the top of it has got scarred and scratched and marked up over the years and I've been thinking about replacing it. Well then some idiot, well that was me, did not put enough wax paper on here and doing some spray painting, I got this on here. And I just thought this is a good time to do it. So I'm going to take this off now, if I can. And I've got another piece I'm going to glue down on top of here. I'll use my router with the trimming bit, go around the edge to make sure it fits good, and put it down here. So if you care to watch, I'll take you through that process. Now, this surface was put on many years ago. It's been there, I don't know, 15 or 20 years and it was put on with contact cement. Now luckily, this one corner has lifted just a little bit. So I'm gonna try forcing this in there. I might have to break it off in pieces, but I'm hoping I can tear the whole thing off, whether it's in one piece or not. So I'll have a surface to glue the new piece on. And I may just sand it before I do that. Doesn't look like this is gonna to be too bad. And I kind of wish I hadn't said that out loud because I know what's going to happen next. Things are going to get rough. But anyway, I'll be back after I get this off. Someone had suggested trying some heat to loosen up the contact cement. This is an old iron that's not used anymore. Hopefully it'll still get warm. Give it a minute here and see if it does anything. Well, it's still a little bit slow going, but the heat does appear to be helping. It lifts it off fairly nicely. It cools in a hurry if I don't get it up off of here. But it does seem to be working. So I'll just keep working at this until it's all off. Once all the glue, or rather all the arborite is left, I'm going to try scraping the contact cement with this scraper. See how well that'll work. Oh yeah, I can certainly tell where the heat was. And the heat's working very well, actually. Just about got it all off now. There we go. That's the last of it. Now I'm going to use this scraper and just try to get all this contact cement off of here. And I think this is going to take a while. It's going to take quite a while. I'll be back after I get all this glue off 
I want to put the board through my drum sander, but I don't want to do it with this glue because that will just guarantee gumming up the sandpaper badly. I shall return. I'm going to see whether mineral spirits might lift this glue. Now, I've got all the doors open. I've got a ceiling fan above me running to take away the fumes. For those who may not know it, mineral spirits are toxic, very toxic. Even getting it on your skin, it can work its way into your system and has been known to be fatal. This is not a joke, this stuff is real toxic. Be careful that you've got lots of ventilation. Don't let it get on your skin for crying out loud. Let's just see if it'll loosen this up. I don't know what it'll do with contact cement, if anything. I'm going with the nothing ventured, nothing gained theory. See if that scrapes any easier. And it certainly does. So I'm going to continue with the mineral spirits, get off everything I can, and then I'll be back. And that's why it's going through the drum sander. Okay, I've done as well as I can on taking the contact cement off. I think there's still a little bit of residue on here, but not near what there was. The mineral spirits did a real good job of dissolving it, and then it a lot of scraping, and it's ready to go through the drum sander. Let's take a look now at what the drum sander is all about. This drum sander was made by Performax, and it's called a 1632 Plus. The reason for that is that it has this open arm design. So if you've got a piece wider than 16 inches, you can feed it through, then flip it around, feed it through again, and do up to 32 inches wide. Now, personally, from my experience, I find that stretching it a bit. I think you can do comfortably a 15 inch wide board one way, and up to 30 inches by flipping it around. So anyway, we're gonna take that top from my workbench now, put it through this, and see what we come up with. Okay, so I want to take these bolts out to hold this down. Now I can lift this off of here and take it and put it through the drum sander. There's quite a bit of chipping out of here, so I need to take a layer down. That's going to take a little bit of time. All right, after putting it through the drum sander, I'm quite pleased. There was a void in the layer underneath the top layer, about the size of a quarter. I filled it with some wood filler. It's dry now and ready to go. You can see the ridge when you turn it around end for end. You can see the ridge at the end of the sanding drum, but it's not much, you can barely feel it. However, I'm going to use a 220 grit disc on this sander. Take that down a little bit and it should be perfect. Little hearing protection, away you go.
and that's got it pretty well. I'll just use a straight edge. It's actually straight. I'm real happy with this. So now the next step will be to put on the next sheet of our break. All right, I've got a can of contact cement here, which I managed to spill a little down the side. That's all right. And I'm using a foam brush to spread it. Now, according to the can, it has to set for at least 15 minutes, and you need to put the two pieces together in less than 60 minutes. So I'm just going to put a thin coat of this on here. I'll set it aside, and then I'll do the same on the wood piece underneath it. This will take a few minutes. And I guess I'm going to get a new brush too. Maybe that'll hold. Fumes, I'm going to open the big door. I've got the doors open, ceiling fan on. Should give me all the ventilation I need, I hope. Stuff really stinks. take this and set it out of the way. All right, I used a tack cloth to make sure I got all the dust off of this. So now I just need to repeat that process and coat this entire board. pieces of scrap strips here that I'm going to put across and I will lay the formica on top of these so that they don't touch the wood right away. So I'll go get the formica and bring it over. down on these strips. Then I have to make sure that it's centered so that I'm not leaving anything uncovered. And I only get one shot at this. Contact cement bonds instantly and I don't want to go back to doing what I did to get the other piece off. 
Now I should always start from the center, so I'm going to pull out the middle one and stick it down. And then I'm going to work from the center out with the J roller to make sure that I don't leave any air bubbles underneath. And slowly pull these pieces out. Alright, my next step is going to be putting a trimming bit in my router, let the bearing ride along the wood, and trim the formica so it's even on the edge. I'm just going to continue doing this a little bit. I want to make sure it's real, real firm. Alright, I've got my flush trimming bit mounted in my router. I've got the depth set so that the bearing will be just below the laminate riding against the plywood to trim the laminate. Now it's going to get a little noisy. Got your ear protection ready? Now I have to go all the way around like this, but the bearing is getting some contact cement on it. Not quite sure why, to be honest. Anyway, I'm going to clean the bearing. I'm going to finish going all around with this, and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm happy, looking good, just like new, and I hope I'll get another 10 or 15 years out of this one, if I last that long. Now, the problem with the contact cement, after I thought about it, you probably already realized, is that using the J-roller squeezed it out so it was underneath the formica and was causing me a problem. Not a big deal. Now, a little word if I may about my shop. I always complain about it being too small, but it's not really. I get along just fine. If I could just get my wife to park her car outside all the time, it would be wonderful. But 25 years plus of arguing about that, that's not going to happen. And I've heard about one guy who's got a shop barely larger, I'm told, than a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood. And I've seen pictures of the work he does, so I've got nothing to complain about. He's doing awesome stuff. So there you go. This is how to get some kind of a poor man's workbench going. I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe picked up a tip or two. Have yourself a great day in your shop. Be safe. Don't forget to subscribe. And come back next time. Take care now.